Okay, so welcome to a, another ESO Homes build. This is like my 20th attempt at filming it today. We'll see what happens. Something has happened every version. So, uh, I'm really hoping I can get it to work now. Uh, after owning it since the Eleanor Pathfinder event, uh, it's been two years and uh, I kept saying, no, this place is too big. But I've finally gotten around to doing a build at the Grand Sizzic Villa. Uh, this is a outpost for the Sizzic Guild. It's a research and training facility. So, you know, it's basically a, a working area with a small living quarters attached. Uh, so start off, uh, I've got my services dropped in the courtyard because it's going to be my primary for a long time. So that's made it a little bit more sloppy outside. But um, we can we can work around that. Okay, so let's start. Uh, shove my Arteum Oral down. Uh, the other one I've placed inside the windmill because I never know what to do with either of them and that actually seems to work fairly well uh, I could have sunk the windmill down so that lined up with this part maybe I'll try that later but I kind of like the feels you get from this. So uh, we're going to ignore all the um, service stuff and we're going to go down here just so I can show you the outside of the area. Um, it's a lot of stone, a lot of steps, a lot of walls, a lot of cracked columns. So you do want to try and have some plants outside just to soften it up. Uh, greenery, uh, I would recommend having the bushiest and the biggest trees if you can. Uh, I haven't done that here but I've used hedges just to break it up instead. Uh, okay so I've just basically added a load of columns for height How do I put my... Okay, I couldn't put my stick away. I knew there was a way of doing it. Oh, stupid plant. Okay, so... Plenty of trees for height. Plenty of bushes. I've tried to add some of the ivies. Uh, those ivies... They're like three stories tall, and I've used three of them, and it's still not enough to soften up this building. So it just goes to show how big this place actually is. But it's come out okay with the, the, the pillars definitely help, and then having the hedges behind just to break up the, the amount of stone you can see on screen. Um, just to show you this, guys, I've... Uh, drops all my junk down here a lot of people put their crafting stations here that also works but uh, I wanted a large enough area to have all my mannequins and dummies uh, vampire facilities refilling after your training facilities <sighs> more dummies more dummies more dummies over there. Uh, I've got 11 different training dummies, I think, or 13 different training dummies uh, scattered around. But that's it. So yeah, just to show you that side. Um, I'm getting sidetracked again, as you can tell. Every time. Uh, use items to soften up the stonework. So I've uh, extended the doorway. Uh, also, I've 
Use my animal gate. Just to give a bit of um breaking up the view to the from the front to the back. Uh this is one statue and two hedges. So you can fill up a large area to decorate if you use big items and height. If you've seen any of my other videos it's the same thing but it's worth repeating, especially for people that might have just clicked on my video once by mistake. And they've probably clicked off really quick too. Uh, so we're going to go inside. Uh, this is nine items without the guards, because they're expensive. It's only seven. And then the view. And the, the, the background here really is beautiful. Even with those pillars popping in and out of existence at the back. Oh, there's other, one other weird thing to show you. I've never really noticed it before, but let's see if it's going to work. Yep. The, that shadow. When I get far enough away disappears and also this one I've never really noticed it loading shadows in and out before so um, it's just a weird uh, weird effect that I've, uh, I thought I'd point out to you guys it's not particularly interesting but it's just interesting to see There's a few lighting tricks. I'm going to show you those at the end, and I'm just going to do the tour. I uh, probably won't even talk much, hopefully, until it's done. I might just explain the rooms. Um, Uh, this is a very big space to decorate, so breaking it up really does help. Two seconds. I hate it when someone comes online and says hello, and other people in the guild, even if you're running a dungeon, yes, you can't stop straight away, but especially if it's uh, someone that's on regularly and always speaks, it took me about one and a half seconds just to type hello or hi or put a smile. It, it takes nothing and yet people don't bother sometimes and it's just yeah I mean sometimes it's not your main guild but you know if you 
at a point where you can say hello, just do it. It's common decency. I think people have got used to not having to be like basically polite. But um, I had a couple of months off from the game, and I noticed when I came back that they've all got. All, all three of them are big guilds that I mean they've all gotten quiet and um I don't know why uh, even a lot of the regulars don't seem to be talking unless they are using voice chats in dungeons and stuff Anyway, like I said, I get sidetracked. I'll, I'll come back to these areas and light them up properly. Ooh, I'll show you this though. I really like this. Okay, so we'll hit the uh, main library. The one upstairs, that's the Magical Tomes section. Um, history, culture, economics, uh, folklore, all goes into the main library here. You've got my uh, council chambers. Well, as I finish the tour, I'll show you some of the lighting stuff and some of the construction stuff for the library. Uh, there's one room I wasn't thrilled with. I wanted an undercroft. I had to stick to Eleanor pieces. And there's something about the lighting I can't quite get right. It doesn't... My graphics are fine. Uh, it says every time you record that the HCR graphics might record differently. The colours whenever I upload are horrible and the graphics are always muted and fuzzy. But even here I can't really see the spider webs. Uh, normally when you have subdued lighting that's when they're more visible. So I don't know maybe if this dream shard that's inside is too bright. But yeah, there's a couple of cobos and the mist of the hagfin in here. You can kind of see it here. So this is the moth priest cleansing bowl merged into the imperial altar of the bay and the amalexia. So I've got three and I've 
shove them together. Um, but this doesn't doesn't seem to seem quite right as an undercroft. Uh, I didn't want to put my orcish coffins in here. They don't look right. Uh, I normally have the plinth further out and I normally tend to put a statue lying down on it. But there's, yeah, there's just something about this room that doesn't seem to flow correctly. If anyone has answers or suggestions, I'm happy to try them out. I've got a light missing from that rug as well. I'll show you that afterwards. Got a chair missing from there as well. Okay, so there's one room left to show you. And then, if in case anyone doesn't want to bounce just yet, I'll show you what I've done with the lighting and a few tips for this area, especially since it's so bloody large. Again, only a few plants. It's literally just to fill in the two awkward gaps that are fairly useless. Everyone tends to put crates and barrels there for storage and I don't like it. Um, this whole concept of having a wall dividing the dais is a shitty idea anyway. I don't know why they did that. But yeah, it just gives you a space that you can't use. Uh, the hedges poke through, that's on purpose, because of this. It's such a big room that you don't really know what to do with it. So it turns it into a mystical greenhouse. Oops.
So... That is it. Um, I'm now going to show you some of the, like I said, some of the lighting tricks. Uh, on a lot of builds I've seen, people have to use 40 lights in this room to light it up properly if you don't have the giant clockwork chandelier. And even they're not big enough. So, what you're going to want to do is go to... I nearly said Riverdale then. Um, Rivenspire? Oh my god, I can't remember. Yep, Rivenspire. And you're going to want to do from the random mobs, or no, or from the nodes. You're going to want to get a couple of... I've only got one. Come on. Where's it gone? That. It is so bright. And it's free, which is pretty damn amazing. It's quite orange. Although, if you have a blue light, I don't know if it'll work with this one. Yep. So if you have an orange light and you put a blue light inside it, red, yellow and blue light makes white in this game. It's the only way I've found of being able to get white lights. Uh, the little tiny dwarven ones are white, which if you're doing a crafting area you need for the colours of the cloth and materials. I mean the blue lights are kind of okay on their own, but they're still give things a fake colour. So that still changes the colour of things. Uh, and a big example of that for lighting is this room. Uh, blue lights on the yellow carpet make it look green but again what you want to have is and I pulled it out early and forgot to put it back uh, again orange light So again, you get these white lights, and you can do the same up here. Okay, press triangle. And this works really well. I don't know why, because... There. Now, the top half of this is really white. If I had a blue light down the bottom as well, it would really help with the colours. Let's just borrow that one. Uh, the blue lights do look really good on their own. quite as good I guess because the orange isn't bright enough or bright orange enough but yeah so you can you can get and I've done the same here it's how you get to keep your walls looking white so do you want a blue building 
or an orange building or white. Uh, the blues do look pretty good. These little free spinning chandeliers aren't quite bright enough. So you're going to want to have something just give them as uh, backup for the lights. Uh, also, to fill up these tall spaces, you'll notice that I've used height. Uh, I think I've done it pretty well. Um, these bookcases from the Crown Store. Uh, there's two over there, one here. The Adenal bookcase, just with some books shoved on it. Doesn't have to be too many because most of them are stacked on the floor. It's just enough that when you look at it, you the the emptiness is broken up. Uh, I need to put something in that book in that case. Uh, same here. More lights. And I did the same with the lights um, in the tree area. Um, the wood elf thrones. They're beautiful, but a lot of the time in the house you can't have them because. The, they poke through into the room above and they just look they don't look right indoors so you have to have them hanging off a tree really but they're also they're very tall and big so having them linked in with the lights themselves it all adds up to the the height that you need Uh, okay, oh the library and the meeting room two very different looks for the same room, exactly the same room uh, with this one it's very functional you literally you go in, you have your meeting, you get out so I kept the room as it is I just put a chandelier up there you can use the orange version of the Calander Stones um, but you want bright lights again, so you don't have to use 10 lights in one room. Uh, optional, but I did add these. And to be honest, they don't add much. Um, they're not bright enough to light up the room. But it's... If you look around the edge, it doesn't look like it's decorated. It looks like I just stopped and didn't bother with the room. So by having these in, you get the lighting effect, which gives it some movement, and that helps the space look full. Uh, also, if the lights are next to a wall, like here, it doesn't do anything, even though it's bright. But when it shines off an item next to it, that's when lights properly work. So just by having these around the edges, it it makes the room look finished, even though it's only seven items. And my floor is still basically empty. Uh, and the height's really nice for this room. However, with the library everything's really dark every single item has to be lit up so you can see it properly which means a crap ton of lights and you can't do it from the ceiling if you don't have a ceiling so i used four of these platforms tried to line them up almost perfectly there's a bit of flicker on yeah that one All right, I just has to raise it. Oh, it's still not enough. All right, I'm gonna have to live with the flicker. But, boil it down, and it meant I could use all these 
ceiling light and then to soften up the room I used the wedding curtains uh, let's see that was a smidge too high so it just it just breaks up the edges same as the lanterns do in the other room uh, again because it was dark and you couldn't see these crates I added lights um, but I had to put them on the center bars instead of the pillars it just means you can see the content of here uh, I didn't even need these boxes but since it's a library I thought it had some of the mementos in And that's pretty much it. Uh, plenty of clutter. All of it brought into little mini working areas. Turn the light on. A uh, few items on the bookcases. Just to try and... It's very hard because this is so full to not make them look exactly the same. You need a row of books to shove in. Do what I could with three bits of clutter. Same over here. Clutter, lights, statues on each one. So try and vary it up uh, and then a little candle here because this was too dark um, that's pretty much it for this room you just want it to feel snug I guess is a nice way to put it uh, so we've talked out here about making the lights white I would have liked to have had the whole room lit up in white but it would have been very difficult to pull off without having these stupid lights everywhere in the floor we'll sort something out with that and then the blue lights they do look pretty cool down the sides um, it looks really dark up there but it's not it's because the light isn't reflecting off anything up there uh, and then the crystals at the end I just wanted to use them because I never do so these are actually purple or kind of pink and I got my blue lights and then my green crystals and then my red and then another green but the blue lights help override so that everything matches yep these are really easy to get from Cold Harbour Everyone's probably got a bunch of these. I should have had one in the middle, not the uh, this plinth, but... Is what it is. So that's it. I hope that's given you some ideas of how to fill a ridiculously big space. Um, if I put some more trees in here... it would have really helped to fill it up simply this doesn't quite work triangle on top of a square that looks a bit better oh damn pokes through never mind I don't care people aren't really going to notice so that's it. Uh, I hope that's helped. I don't think there's really anything to see. Uh, if you have the Molag Pol Bowl Pack, then you just shove it in and then drop some of these uh, roots from 
the oh my god the daily quest guides for the dungeons I'm blanking on their names oh my god undaunted good grief Your so She's new, so I'm just curious. And his ambition to conquer the world. A very unknown trait in the world war. Alright. Um, that's it. Um always remember to use carpets. Big spaces. It really helps to pull in your eyes. That's why I've got this long runner here from Breton. I don't know, this is just like a oh. informal meeting place if need to just talk about something or if there's a uh, more of them I just shove those there for fun um, again the runner just helps to put everything in uh, carpets are often invisible here if you don't have a light on them I uh, could have done with a couple of small little rugs in here I don't think I've got any. Nope. Not on me anyway, I've got a million rugs. And that's it. So. Until next time guys. Oh, I love this room. Happy building. <laughs>